the true model of brain disease. In order to understand the terms in this article some basic details are explained. There are several parts of neurons and nerve cells. These are 1 the synapses, 2 the dendrites, 3 the cell body, 4 the axon. There are about 100 billion nerve cells in the brain. Dendrites are fibers which receive information from other neurons. The dendrites are tree-shaped. Dendra means tree in ancient Greek. Dendrites have protuberances on their surface called dendritic spines rather like leaves on a tree. Dendritic spines have receptors or synapses on their surface. Synapse means connection in ancient Greek. Synapses receive chemicals or neurotransmitters from other nerve cells. The axon is a single fiber which transmits information to other neurons. Axon means to go or to travel in ancient Greek. In a recent study Professor John Armstrong found that changes in spine or leaf density and length precede changes in synaptic strength and number. This confirms the importance of the spines or leaves in being required for synapse development. Generally speaking the more dendritic spines there are on a dendrite the more electrical activity and fire in electrical signals or fire in rates there are. However many questions remain unanswered. In most psychiatric diseases there are changes in the shape of neurons and in particular the dendritic spines. The dendritic spines or leaves are generally reduced in number and density. This may be compared to the reduction of the leaves on a tree which occurs from summer into winter. These abnormalities are associated with immune system activation. The immune system seems to be regulated by white cells called regulatory T cells or TREX. The immune system in the brain is abnormal in most psychiatric disorders and may be associated with abnormal TREG cell activity. This suggests that the changes in dendritic spines are inflammatory in nature. Genetic abnormalities are also increasingly being discovered in psychiatric disease which explains why identical twins often both have the same psychiatric disorder. The inflammation of the dendrites is called dendritis, as in medicine inflammation of a structure is preceded by the suffix itis. It is noted that dendritis precedes nerve cell death or epoptosis and that in most psychiatric disorders the nerve cells are still alive but not functioning normally due to the inflammation of the dendrites. Synapse numbers are also affected and this may be described as synapsitis. However as Professor Armstrong's research confirms the dendritic spines seem to determine the synapse numbers rather than vice versa. It is important to realize that up to 70% of the brain's synapses on these spines change every day as described by Professor Travis. The spines or leaves can decrease in number over hours in response to stress as described by Professor Baram. And so to the clinical features of psychiatric disorders and how they relay to reduced dendritic spine or leaf numbers. In psychiatric disorders the reduction in spine or leaf numbers is predominantly in the frontal lobes or front of the brain. Reduced numbers of dendritic spines result in reduced fire in rates or electrical activity of the dendrites. This is correlated with the development of increased sensitivity to excessive feel bad or negative thoughts and feelings of one resentment or hatred. 2. Self-pity or depression. 3. Fear of anxiety. 4. Dishonesty or criminality. There is often associated obsessive-compulsive behavior when dendritic spine numbers are reduced in the frontal lobes. If the memory center of the brain or hippocampus dendritic spines or leaves are affected short-term memory and later long-term memory will be decreased. This is referred to as hippocampitis. It was thought that in some disorders of the brain an accumulation of material from disorder metabolism was the reason why that brain malfunctioned. However recent studies have confirmed that there just was not enough volume of the debris to account for the abnormal brain function, for example, in Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. Reduction in spine or leaf numbers are now being noted in many brain disorders such as migraine and epilepsy. In summary most psychiatric diseases and neurological diseases are associated with reduction in size and numbers of dendritic spines. The spines may be compared to the leaves on a tree. 
The proposed comparison to the reduction of leaves on a tree from summer into winter may be easier to understand than the current chemical model where patients are informed that their brain chemicals such as serotonin or dopamine are imbalanced. The good thing about the tree model of psychiatric disorders is that patients can be informed that the spines or leaves to regrow and recover the dendrites from which they spring from leading to the restoration of health. Spinally free growth occurs with all of the standard psychiatric treatments, for example, clozapine, Prozac, amphetamine or Ritalin. Interestingly, spine regrowth can occur with caffeine, alcohol, morphine, nicotine and cocaine. Talking with relatives and friends or CBT, physical and mental exercise and diet are also thought to result in recovery. Maybe it is time patients became more aware of the tree model of brain disorders. It seems much simpler to compare changes in our brains to the seasonal changes in trees instead of chemical factories which sometimes have reduced output.